Microsoft really wants their users to go to Windows 11. Windows 11, the latest and greatest Windows version, was released back in October 2021, and ever since then, more and more PCs and laptops have been shipping with it, increasing its overall market share to about 21% as of May 2023. However, Windows 10, released six years prior to Windows 11, still holds 71% market share worldwide, and with Windows 10 now being in the last stages of its life, it will only receive essential security updates until October 14, 2025, which is the last day that Windows 10 will receive any fixes, after that date, it will become vastly obsolete, and then what, you may ask? Well, with Windows 11 having such high hardware requirements, and the ever-increasing amount of tracking bundled into Microsoft Windows, it's going to have a negative impact on Windows 11. But if the majority of people can afford a computer that can run Windows 11, let's not forget that there are millions of people around the world who don't even have access to basic necessities such as food and water, Windows 11 gaining popularity will be slowed down heavily, and Windows 10 will take a long time to die down in market share. And even by 2025, a lot of PCs will most definitely still be running the decade-old OS. While other operating systems also have some market share, people generally don't move to Mac OS, Linux, BSD, or the lesser-known OSs such as React OS or Heiku, mainly due to a number of reasons, one of them being the fact that these other OSs have much smaller market share, and thus, do not have a lot of software compatibility, so if you use Linux, you would likely know that FL Studio, Adobe Photoshop, and Microsoft Office are not compatible with any Linux distro, so if you do use Linux, or one of the other systems mentioned, you will have to find a substitute piece of software, and luckily for those Linux users out there, there is a great plethora of free and open source software, such as GIMP a fantastic image manipulation program that is very similar to Photoshop, in terms of functionality and power. Now, back to the topic of Windows 11, we have also heard numerous rumors that Microsoft is actively developing a new version of Windows, supposedly with more artificial intelligence integrated into it, and Windows 11 recently received a feature where you can bring up a co-pilot chatbot on the right side of the screen, and ask it questions much like what you can do with ChatGPT and Google Bard. Windows 11 will continue to grow, and now, Windows 11 holds just over 25% market share in Australia, that means that approximately every one out of four computers in Australia run Windows 11, and I am sure that this would be a similar statistic in Canada, America, New Zealand, and the UK. Windows 10 still has 68% market share here in Australia, so that's kind of worrying, especially considering its end of life is almost less than two years away, and with Windows 12 on the horizon, is this going to be how Microsoft gets everyone to their latest OS? Well, I really don't know, because nothing surrounding Windows 12 has actually been confirmed by Microsoft, so at the moment, it's all just speculation. What we do know is that while newer computers will continue to be purchased by consumers, a hefty chunk of older PCs and laptops will still be around, and rather than throwing them away, which would be absolutely terrible for the environment, we need to keep them in operation, or find a way to revive the older hardware. I know Linux is perfect for that sort of thing, and the only way to do so is to have the latest and greatest version of any operating system, excluding Mac OS, because Mac is Apple-specific. But if these PCs are still running Windows 10 after 2025, that will definitely bring concern to many people, especially considering that Windows is the most used OS worldwide, and also the number one target for hackers to infect. Then comes Mac OS, Linux, Android and iOS. So if Windows 10 still has at least 50% market share in 2025, which it most likely will, this means that a hefty chunk of computers will be left vulnerable to malware and ransomware, which also is affecting more Linux systems nowadays. That's a bit worrying to say the least, idle Linux was all about being very secure. Well, it is more locked down than Windows, 
so it's harder for viruses to infect the Linux system, but ransomware and other nasties can definitely make their way onto a Linux system, and the same can be said about Windows, ransomware seems to be the most active form of malware in this day and age, so you always have to update your OS to stay safe from these exploits, even Mac OS has been getting critical patches a lot lately. Which leads me to think that Mac is also getting more malware attacks, especially in more recent years. By the way, did you know that over 56% of PCs in Armenia still run Windows XP, and over 25% in China still run Windows 7, so I would hate to think how many PCs in the rest of the world will still be running Windows 10 after it has reached its end of life. Only a relatively small number of people worldwide will be able to buy newer computers. That is, the working class of people, not the average person, or people living at or below the poverty line, which is quite a lot of people around the world believe it or not, so that means that it will take a long time for newer versions of Windows, especially considering the stupidly strict hardware requirements, to gain popularity, and, since more and more people are gaining an interest in Linux, it will continue to slowly gain in desktop market share. But Linux is so small, only 2.86% of PCs run Linux worldwide, in desktop market share, and that's mainly enthusiasts like myself, who want to run Linux as their main OS, for whatever reason, but the majority of people will often say that Linux is too hard, let me tell you, it's not as hard as you think, you just have to get used to the way things work in Linux, and the only way to do so is to use it as your main OS if possible, so that way, you know what Linux feels like, and you don't have to stay with Linux, if you don't like it, go back to whatever OS you were using beforehand. The end of Windows 10 is only going to get closer and closer, so I think it's about time us consumers to look at alternative operating systems, especially if you have an old PC or laptop lying around, that could make for a great Linux or BSD machine and you could even try Heiku or React OS on physical hardware too, if that was of personal interest. However, I think most users will just stick with Windows, but if they have an older PC laying around, they could get a Linux distro up and running without any issues. Linux is my favorite OS, and I know a fair few of my viewers also like Linux, but it just will not gain the momentum or market share that Mac OS and Windows have. Although I do see Linux and Chrome OS becoming more popular in years to come. Alrighty, that's it for this video folks. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.